This is a Main Hustle Media Podcast. Main Hustle Media Podcasts are recorded on the ancestral lands of the Chumash, Tongva, Hohokam, and Yucateco Maya people. And we wish to pay our respects to the people of those nations, both past and present. Hola, buenas tardes, todos y todos. Hola, buenas tardes y todos. I don't know. I'll get there. I'm my start class de español tonight. Yeah. Welcome to Queer and Far Podcast, a travel podcast from a couple of queer femmes, providing tips and resources to travel safely while black, brown, queer, disabled or from any other marginalized group and intersection in between. I am one of your co-hosts, Senor Tia Charmaine Fury, a.k.a. The Blazing Blurred. And as always, I am joined by my uh, podcast esposa. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> podcast, podcast esposa. Shenanigans, still a noob, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Oh, and uh, my uh, non-binary folks out there. Why <laughs> are you doing that, camera? Stop. Oh, yeah, you're getting blurry. Why are you getting blurry? I don't know. Stop moving. <laughs> this I'm is our ready. first time back since yep. uh, you went back to the US of A and left me here in Mexico to fend for yourself. Myself. No, joking. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, my energy is hella low today. I was, I don't know why. Like, I could just feel myself being like, Ugh, I'm half asleep. But that's kind of how I feel all the time between the hours of like 11 to 3. So, yeah, I that's think why that they see us to there. It's too fucking hot. It's hot because no. even though no. I'm in the room with the AC on, you feel, you feel the no. heat. And it's not even May yet, which is supposed to be the hottest. That is going to be the time that yes. we really know if you're going to love. And you're going to be moving in May. Yeah. That yeah. sounds like fun. That sounds uh, super fun. Uh, so, but on this one, we decided since we've been apart now for about two weeks, I think it's been about that kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two weeks. Actually, I think it's like exactly two weeks since you went back to the States. Let's chat a little bit about uh, your adventures. Coming to America. (laughs) Um, I will say, I just find it hilarious, Internet, that um, it was a lot easier to travel to Mexico with four cats, 12 bags, and four humans (laughs) than to get back home to the United States with two humans and no check bags. Why, you may ask? It's called customs. So we landed in Dallas and we were on the runway or the tarmac for 30 minutes because there was a plane in our way. And so we had to go to another terminal. After that, we had to go through customs, which was, it was like two terminals long. There's like the two different lines. One was yeah, like- but we couldn't even have- see that line. Oh, I didn't even get that line until after, after about like there I hear they go to the keep going this way to the back of the line and it kept going like two terminals away, okay, and we had, perfect. and I'm like no problem when we were landing I was like okay we have two hours layover no problem we'll have a chance to get. It took the whole time. So it took me at least forty minutes to get to the part of the line that said uh, regular customs here, which is from this point thirty minute wait which is right outside the door because inside the door, it looked like Disneyland where they do the the lines like this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because there were out of like having 20 stalls, there were like four people in them at at three o'clock in the fucking afternoon. So, um, and then on this side they go, Oh, if you have global entry two minute wait. Yeah. Yeah. When you sent me that picture, I was like, see, like, yeah. I, you know, I knew, I remember when you guys were getting your appointment, there was some reason why you wouldn't be able to do the global entry it, at the time. Yeah, the global entry at the time is because we we needed, it, they, we, they were so backed up, they needed yeah. at least six months and we didn't have that. So you now- got the pre-check. Right. So uh, we just did TSA pre-check. So after we went through all of this line, they didn't even look at my passport. They just waved me through. No, they didn't. Yeah, they, yeah. And then after that, we had to go through TSA security check all over again with a TSA gentleman who was on a fucking power trip. 
So you and was went through customs, mm -hmm. and then you had to go into a TSA line to do security. To scan all, your bag because technically and all now we've now landed in America. We have to start all over again. Oh, okay. No, that makes sense. I, I mean, so, it doesn't. And then you get it's your stupid, bag, and then you get, it makes yeah. sense. Then yeah, you had to go through. You. And why would, would what? And having pre-check didn't help me. We did, there was no line. I had to go be in the regular line. And then when they're oh, your pre-check, you don't have to take off your belt or your shoes. Thanks. Thanks for so for me seventy five fucking dollars. That's all whatever get through that and we're running and you know my my broken fat ass is running through the and because you know we're still at the tsa we have to take a tram you know how big yeah dallas, dallas is a is. huge airport so you almost always have to take a tram if you have a connecting flight by the time we got to we were the last people getting on board they were closing the door yeah and you were <laughs> and i was and they were fucking annoyed with us and i'm sure. like like, it's not your fault. Not my, I, like that, that has that. And of course, nothing's going to change because they won't hire. They, they have enough people. They can hire people. They make more than enough money to do it, but they won't. We all know how this works. So um, we did make it back in time. Well, um, no, no, because you got on the plane, you were the last oh, people and on board. And then we sat for 30 minutes because something was broken on the plane. So everybody was mad at you for being late, but the plane was broke. Yeah. So and you know, why. side note also, ladies and gentlemen, and I understand that this could probably happen anywhere. However, in my experience, this seems to only happen with Americans. Um, I had just spent 11 glorious days watching an entire uh, group of people behave differently. Uh, a, 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 a group of people in society that were more socially conscious of taking care of one another. Yeah. And the first experience back in the United States with dealing with rude people who were upset that we were, even though it had nothing to do with that, but again, yeah. they don't know me from Adam was a woman sitting directly behind us on the plane, being upset that we leaned back in our seats and were complaining and pushing on the seats for the mm. five hour flight or whatever, how long it was back to the States and complaining to the stewardesses that we're being, rude Oh, this is from your Mexico to, America. to from, 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 from the, um, from Dallas to, oh. to, to Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. Was a rude ass white older woman mm. being an entitled prick. Yeah. Cause you kind of didn't, so you left Medida at about, you, you left our three. place at about like one thirty or one o'clock or something like that. Right. Our flight you... was 3 PM. We landed in, uh, we Dallas. landed in Dallas of like five. And then you had your two and a half hour. Or so yeah, um, we we're supposed to take wait. off at seven something, but you didn't actually get home until like midnight. Yeah. Oh, and the, um, we couldn't get a lift to save our life. So we got Uber and it was a $75 drive for God. 17 minutes. Damn. Really? After I, I got spoiled after being in Mexico and doing five, $5 <laughs> for real. Right. So I forget. Cause when I went to Arizona, um, I had flown out. I don't remember if, did one of you drop me off at the airport or did I take a, we dropped you off. You did? Yeah. Okay. You didn't No, no. A, you gave me money to take the lift. Oh, that's all right. Because you had gone to the hospital the night before. Mm, that's right. I had case done. So I think that's right. Because I think I paid probably like 60 or something dollars to do just, and your house is not super duper far from the airport, but yeah, it's crazy because I, it, I, yeah, here so far, we're paying, you know, roughly around five to seven dollars um, an Uber, sure. depending on how far out we need to go. Um, so uh, I think when we move to the place that we're going to move, so we'll get into that a little bit, too, about finding a new place. Uh, then they're going to be more expensive because we are for, we're going to be a lot right. further out from central yeah. the city. Um, and like where Tristan goes to jujitsu is going to be a seven dollars each day. Um which would be going six times a week. It's going to, you know, 
basically we're, we get a car payment now, <laughs> yeah. um, just in Ubers. Um, but you know, we'll see, we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, yeah. So that's a damn nightmare. You had, you immediately, cause I remember the next day getting the message where you're like, we, we've got our global entry appointments so that you can come back into the States a little bit faster. Um, while I haven't done global entry, you know, yet I've paid for it and stuff like that. It's just a, T, a TSA pre-check that I've benefited yeah. from so far. Um, when we have to come back to the States in September to start our, uh, residency program process, uh, hopefully I will be able to see if I can benefit from that. The problem is to fly from Medida specifically mm -hmm. into the States, there's not a whole lot of options because it's not a, mm -hmm. it's an international airport, but it's not a major destination no. airport. No. Most people who come to Medida fly to save a little bit of money. They fly to Cancun and, and then, then drive. take a bus a four hour bus to Medida. Um, I am not about that life whatsoever. I would ra rather pay, e I mean, with the cats or without the cats, I would rather just pay the extra money and fly directly out of here. But the flip of that means there's only a few places that will go from Medida to the States. And that is either Dallas direct or Houston direct, but the Houston flights are fewer and, yeah. and far between the Dallas flights are more present. And since yeah. And since I know, and honestly, Dallas is a major hub. It is. So the likelihood of us having to use that again for wherever we're going is going to go up. So I am lucky enough to be able to afford the because global entry is not cheap. No, it's a couple hundred dollars and you have to do a full interview, which by the way, ours is on July the 7th. So we'll give you a report on that. Yeah. Having done it myself, it's not that big of a process. It's a longer wait to get your appointment <laughs> than it is to yeah. actually go through it. Cause once you go through yeah. it, uh, my biggest problem when I was trying to look for my appointment was a place nearby. I couldn't right. find anywhere in Houston for like six or seven months. So I ended right. up picking San Antonio. And right. since I'd had like a free hotel night um, reward for best Western, I mm -hmm. made a trip out of it. So there are some pictures of that. Um, I don't think I ever finished the video. I'm so behind on all the videos. Mm -hmm. Like two years from now, I'll post all the videos from like two years ago of all the travel that I did. Um, but um, so I made, you know, like a little overnight of it. And I so I got into in from Houston. I drove to San Antonio, which is about a two and a half, three hour drive for me. Uh, went straight to the airport. I, I waited about 20 minutes after my air, my appointment was supposed to start before someone came and got me. And then it was mm -hmm. five minutes in and out. And I was like, so what do I do next? And she's like, you're done. I, I gave you your number. You're fine. Yeah, I was bye. Like, oh, so oh. I planned this whole overnight thing for like this five minute appointment, which really was just you in person declaring that, you know, you are who you say you are and you're not planning on committing any law, um, any, any crimes, break any, break any laws. And then yeah. you get your number. And then within 10 days, you get your global entry card. Which has then, the PSA pre-check associated uh, basically. With it. But um, does that, and then when you redo it every year, because you have to redo it every year, correct? No, it's good for five years. Okay, that's nice. Um, or 10. I I forget now. Um, my wallet's over there. I could look at it because I have the card with me. So, but then it's just another form of ID too, which is, you know, helpful to have when you're right. abroad. Right. Um, right. In my case, because I paid for just the hundred dollars for the global entry and then a hundred dollars for my husband to do his, that's what we paid because mm -hmm. you had such a long wait, you decided to go for the TSA pre-check. So you paid for that and then you're going to pay for the global entry. So that's why for you, it's going to be, it's going to cost us more, a and, lot more money. But if I don't have to do that line again or running sprinting, I will. Yeah. Do it. And also the anxiety the anxiety is pretty high. And I'll say that. Uh, so when I, when my global entry came through, um, my flight, I think to New York it was either New York or Atlanta. It came through like the day I was going. So I didn't have my card, but I had my number already mm -hmm. um, because they do give you that number when you leave the appointment. So I was able to put that into my flight thing. So I was able to do pre-check without my card the very first time and the shorter ride, the no, taking off my shoes, the no belt thing, all that kind of stuff was so much easier that I, I like the very first time, I think I remember passing through it and sending you a text, like you I'm know, done worth every penny, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, like um, yeah. the convenience and the, the less anxiety for that. It was um, it. So like I chalk it up to less of a travel expense and more of a mental health expense. Yeah. In my case. Um, yeah. Well, you know, 
So, I mean, I, lesson learned. I got a great story out of it. It We <laughs> did make it home, thank God. Because, you know, at that point, you just want to go home and lay in you your bed. You just want to go know? home. Like, you just want to go home. Travel um, days are nightmare days. Like, when you're on the side at yeah. the beginning of your, your trip, you're like, I just want to get to the place so that I can, you know, be on vacation mode and blah, blah, blah. But um, we couldn't even really enjoy our first night there because at that point, it was still like get cat litter, you know, put up yeah. a box, make sure that everybody can, you yeah. know, get situated. And so I think after you left our Airbnb, after we left the airport, we didn't even see each other until the next day. No. Um, and that was still a bit of a chaos, which we yeah, talked about. You were, like, yeah, because my phone we'll it, wasn't yeah, working but, and all that other yeah. kind of stuff. So we didn't really kind of feel like our vacation started till probably like the second day. Right. Um, well, I mean, you know, but I, we, we, we did it. And I, all yeah. I'm just saying is this, I mean, again, and you probably had more stress on the flying there because you had all the, the responsibilities cats, yeah. plus the cats. For me, I had one cat and less responsibility. And I thought it was with all the kerfuffles that happened. Yeah. It wasn't it, that many kerfuffles. I, it felt, it felt way more hectic, way more stressed, way more like, I mean, also like the timing, like we almost missed that flight from yeah. not a mistake of ourselves. And you might have had to stay overnight. Yeah, at if, our expense. At your expense, yeah. You know, uh, so. Which would have sucked because, again, it wouldn't have been your fault, but no, it, it still would have been you know fucked up in some... Because TSA is not going to pay for your fight being delayed, no. which is kind of fucked up. So you had the back end of your trip, which, you know, already planning that a travel day is going to suck. In, in your case, you had this extra, you had two extra issues that caused that to suck so much. And one yep. was the backup at TSA and the, the other one was the, or customs. And the other one was your flight having a problem. Cause I remember getting the updates while you're just like still sitting on the plane, still waiting to go. Okay. They say it's going to work now. Okay. Another 15 minutes, you know, like it was, it was that until you finally, and I think by the time you finally got home, I had already gone to bed for the yeah, night. Um, so I and didn't really hear until the next day that everything was okay. So, and then reporting in um, within one day of coming back to the United States and eating the food here, I had heartburn. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get into that a little bit because you had such a tremendous gastronomical yeah. situation basically yeah. when you got there because we've been talking about it leading up to this trip like being concerned about whether or not you were going to be able to eat okay yeah and how what the impact was going to be given your health issues and stuff like that and pretty much like right away you were like i've been here two or three days and i haven't had heartburn yet there's yeah the only i mean it was there a little dif difference in going to the bathroom yeah you're sure. eating different food you're yeah. eating different bacteria in the in the area if you know gut and i've biome. been here almost okay. a month and i'll tell you the stools right. are still soft <laughs> okay. so like we are very healthy internet so we'll talk about our poops um yeah. yeah we like to talk about poop for some reason but immediately immediately i can't drink juice in the united states i can't do basically oh yeah you were juicing it up i everyone's like we well, you're not like some alcohol like nah, nah. i mean i would order one and not even drink it i just want juice like yeah. I just, yeah. So, or even things that with a little bit more spice to it or onion or uh, IBS guys, that's what I have. And, um, you know, I can't, I mean, I, there's times when I drink water <laughs> and I have heartburn. Um, so it was really nice to, to be able to do that and have the McDonald's experience, which was I cannot, I, I cannot. It's so crazy. I do that. have some video of me eating the McDonald's that we had when we were, when we were together and kind of, it was sort of a joke. Like we were planning on going to a taco fest and then we're just yeah. like, we're, we're kind of so curious tired. about whether or not yeah. McDonald's is good. And we kind of just want something we're used to a little bit. Yeah. Um, so we ended up going to a McDonald's um, that I thought was close to where we were, but it turned out to not be close. Watch, I'm really place. glad you did because that we did that. Cause we now we know where to, to go shopping. We got to go yeah. shopping. Yeah. So, um, the food, the McDonald's food is better. Like I'll say the chicken nugs taste the same, same. but the, yeah. the everything burgers, else, it, it tastes way better. Except for the fries. I will still say the fries are better because, in the yeah, U S I think it, Jeff said this because they, they salt them or maybe they use different oil. Maybe that, but, but also they they don't seem to be salted in additional. And that, that goes I, back to that thing of the, like the things you expect to be salty here are not aren't as salty the, things yeah. you expect to be sweet 
uh, are or more salt, sweet. Salt, yeah. And then oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah, things yeah. that you're not anticipating saltiness are hella salty, like hamburguesa, hamburger. But I ate McDonald's and I didn't salty. have heartburn. That's my big thing. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Like, so, yeah. So coming back to America, it's been... Um, yeah, I can't heart wait to come back. again. Like, can't I really can't wait eat. to come back. Well, then you know, and the people and and stuff. And I mean, I, I think at this point, I'm just sort of tired and done. Um, and also, now you know what you're missing because up until up until we actually got here, we've been fantasizing about Merida, together like and separately years, yeah. about what life like here yeah. will be like here. And um, you know, it's not perfect. It sure. it comes with its own issues, like everybody else, but. Hands down, I was so impressed with the way they treat one another. Yeah, I, I've only heard one person yelling in the street. Um, uh, so we were like outside of the, 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 I think it was, was it the Walmart or something like that? We were waiting for an Uber outside and like diagonal across the street, a uh, car, there was like a screech sound, a honk, and then some some clear swearing in Spanish. I don't know what was being said, except for I caught punto, and I was like, okay, I know I know something's going down. <laughs> um, so I've been here a month, and that's like the only yelling I've heard like that. And then where I'm at in my Airbnb, a couple uh, house or so over, there's uh, someone who has dogs that clearly yeah, they are, are in distress sometimes throughout the day. And last night, I think it was, Two, the two dogs were about to start fighting or, or whatever. And the way the guy screamed at him, the, the, the pure like blood curdling anger in that person's voice, I was like, Oh shit. Um, so that's like the two negative, re you know, behaviors types things that I've seen in people. Other than that, like, again, like we talked about last time, the, the way they treat the elderly here, the thoughtfulness to help people, the walking, just walking up to us and asking, you know, can we help you? Where do you need to go? Blah, blah, blah. Um, that stuff is, is pretty wild how thoughtful people are here. Um, there's been a few times when I can tell people are a little frustrated with us not speaking enough Spanish or, yeah. but it's, again, it doesn't come off like a rude frustration. It, it literally comes off of like, oh my gosh, I wish I could communicate with you. Yeah. Um, which is the same frustrating experience i'm having too yeah. like uh i'll be like hold on and i'm you know get into my phone and stuff like that so um i have had heartburn a couple times since i've been here mm. but i think that when you know now i'm getting a little bit more acclimated um i think it's because i'm drinking water and my body's not used to drinking water because the time i drink water it, it's been right after i've had a glass of water and did you lie down afterwards yes I'll be knowing you, you old, you old people now. Okay. We got to sit up for a while. <laughs> we got to acclimate. Okay. We got to absorb before we, we before see. We Cause I think it like drink a glass of water before I go oh. to bed so that, you know, mm. I wake up without, you know, dark pee or whatever. But, um, but right. yeah, I don't always feel great about it. The other thing is I had, um, a Bucky. So for those of you in the Texas or Southern area, Bucky's the gas station, uh, I bought a shit ton of, cotton candy flavored mints and orange flavored mints because their mints are the best. They're not mint flavored cotton candy or mint flavor. You know, they're just the mint. And so, um, but I haven't been having them. And up until coming to Mexico, we were having them like crazy. So the other day when I was at the vet with Revan and Rain, I popped one. Oh no, I popped a mint one, an actual mint one. I got so nauseous. I was like spitting into a trash can, hoping I wasn't going to throw up. Um, nervous that i was going to get real sick at the vet's office and stuff like that it was pretty bad so um i won't be taking those mints anymore um but uh, wow. so I've had, yeah it was really it was crazy because i i'm you're talking about going from eating those constantly in the car like just popping them like crazy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to not having them for you know three or four weeks and then to immediately get as sick and nauseous as it was like i felt this like huge pain in my chest and mm -hmm. all kinds of shit and i was like okay so that's I'm not good trying those things no again. so all right well i want to segue okay okay so talk to us about the experience of finding a more permanent house okay in Merida. Uh, so uh, I've talked about it before. I'm in this group uh, called the Brothers and Sisters of Medida, which is a, a, a black expat immigrant slash uh, group. And there's brothers and sisters groups all over, but um, you usually pick the one that's in the place mm -hmm. that you're planning on living or that you are living. 
I picked uh, Merida because that's where we're going to come. And I was a member of the group for about four or five months before we got here. Mm -hmm. And the tips and the, the recommendations and stuff like that have been really invaluable there because, you know, there's people from my community that are saying what it's like to live out here. And so it was a big part of why I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm sure when we were still debating between Mexico City and Merida that Merida was the one that I wanted to try. So around the time we got here, someone posted that they had just gotten a lease for $280 a month for a two bedroom, one bath house for a single parent and their child. Um, and that they use this real estate person or this person to assist them in the real estate. And they posted their WhatsApp. Uh, her name is uh, Adia Veda. And she is actually Honduran who was mm -hmm. living in Canada for a long time. And her sister lives here. So she came here. She's wanting to settle out here as well. So what she does here is assist expats um, with the translation aspect and the search for finding a place to stay or setting up your, you know, the things you need to set up nannies, um, internet, you know, whatever uh, to try to help you maneuver that stuff. So, um, the person in the group had posted about how easy it was and how helpful she was. So I reached out to her on WhatsApp when we were like at a restaurant or something. Um, and she started texting me back and then, yeah, yeah and then it kind of went quiet for a couple of days because she knew that we weren't actively right. looking until our Airbnb was running out. But then there was a day once you got back to the States that you started sending me a whole bunch of listings and I was looking at listings. So I started sending those listings to her and I was like, this is what we want. We need at yeah. least, we need at least a two bedroom place, but we would prefer a three bedroom. We want at least two bathrooms because mm -hmm. we're tired of having one bathroom. We've had one bathroom for the last 15 years and it's, it's insane. Uh, we want a one story because we're tired of going up and down the stairs with our bum knees, which is actually hard to get here. One stories are actually hard to get here. Um, is it one story? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we, you know, we wanted it to be modern enough um, because of like aesthetically, Mm -hmm. you know that's what Tristan is. I, I don't mind some of the colonial aesthetics aspects but like the place we're in here now is modern with clear Mexican design ties and influences okay. and stuff like that right um but uh like aesthetically I don't I don't mind the stuff that's here I would change some of the furniture but not all of it uh but Tristan was like you know it's not really my style I'd rather things be a little bit more modern I wanted definitely the amenities to be modern but like design wise I was willing to take um same you know different things yeah. to, you know I'm I'm here in a different place I, I want to yeah. see some stuff um so that's what it was about three bedrooms, at least two bathrooms, one story with a pool because you need a fucking dipping pool here. I would prefer a lap pool, but dipping pool was going to be yeah. fine. You know, the whole thing, whatever. Well, don't you have a pool across the street now? Well, where we're at here um, in the in the Airbnb, there's a, yes. lap, a small lap pool. But uh, I thought you have a sports center and there is a sports the center across from the house that we're going to be going to so i sent her a whole bunch of things and i'm like here's aesthetically what i like right. and here's like neighborhood what i like oh, okay and so she was sort of absorbing those things and then she hit me with the like here's the situation i'm going to try to find you i'm going to prioritize the these some of these things so the things that i told her was like they have to be cool with me being a foreigner um they they have to be cool with us having four cats uh, we have to live in a place where we can get strong internet. And then all those amenity things are, that we talked about, those things too. She was like, I'm going to process where I'm going to prioritize the cat thing and then kind of work from there. So okay. if you end up getting something that's not as desirable, but they're cool with the cats, that's going to be your major priority. I said, I agreed. And she went for it. She hits me with um, this listing that immediately was perfect it oh, is no. about 10 to 15 minutes further out of of the main part of the city than i kind of would have preferred but once i saw it i was like no this is the spot so she said i know i could have sent you like two or three listings but i think you would have been more confused and overwhelmed with it and she was like i was trying to get the thing that checked off more boxes than less and so she was going to start me with this one and if i absolutely hated it she would provide me with another one but up until then, she really only sent me the one listing. Uh, but once I saw the pictures, I was like, this looks great. And then I Googled the area. Um, it is a very nice area. There are a lot of more newer homes in, in that area. Um, and there are still, you know, like, you're not too far away from like a wall, you're like eight miles away from a Walmart or eight minutes or something like that. Um, and 
uh, laundry mats and all that other kind of stuff. There's just stuff. We're, we're close to a main fair. Across the street, though, there is this huge sports center that has like basketball courts, swimming pools, mm. tennis courts, soccer fields, like all kinds of stuff there. Uh, so you can get like a membership, you know, it's like a not I wouldn't say it's like a country club, but it doesn't have country club vibes, I guess, is what I want to say. Very nice, huge place. But because that's across the street, I have no cross the way neighbors mm -hmm. next side by side are lots of land that nobody has purchased yet. So they I don't have neighbors, which for me is ideal, too, because I don't like to really have to talk to people if I don't need to. But the it ended up being a three bedroom, three bath house, modern features. So I don't have the best of pictures because they've already pulled the listings down. And I only took a couple pictures because it was kind of chaotic when you're there. So we were there with Aria, who was my representative. Aria had her real estate agent guy who only oh, spoke okay. Spanish. And then the landlady was there too. She okay. kind of spoke English and Spanish, but mostly Spanish. So it was like, Duh, duh, duh. <laughs> like everything, <laughs> you know, everything was kind of bouncing off of the yeah. thing or whatever. Um, in the backyard, though, there are uh, there is a pool and it's like a lap pool. So I have forever wanted a lap pool. I don't want a nice. whole kidney size. You know, let's hang out of the pool thing. Yeah. I want a lap pool. I've always wanted a lap pool. And this is a proper lap pool size thing. But the extra exciting thing about this house is that the pool. So she says you pay about 150 pesos a month for the water for the house, except for the pool. You don't have to pay for the water. And I said, why not? And she said, because it comes from the cenote. So there is a fountain that spits out water into the pool. And I guess it drains somewhere, too, because it's a constant cycling thing. The water is tapping into the nearest cenote, which is the underwater the underground water pools. Um, so it's clean spring water, fresh water, you know, not not chlorinated, mm -hmm. not processed mm -hmm. water, whatever, which will be great for my hair situation. <laughs> uh, not having to put chemical, more chemicals than the chemicals I already do with this purple hair. Uh, so my whole thing about coming to Medida was I just wanted to sleep in hammocks and swim in cenotes all day long. And I wanted that to be my life. And now I kind <laughs> of accidentally have my own cenote, even though it's a pool, I got water coming from that's so cool, now, which is like that the is coolest cool. fucking thing ever. Um, there are hammock hooks on the patio in the backyard, so I will be able to go. I'm you'll on be my, having you'll having both. And I'm then, like looking around now to see if I can find a. And when you don't hammock. have Haskells, you're gonna be naked. Yeah. Oh, that's that the other hammock, thing. And naked. The in walls pool. on this backyard are so high; they're like twenty feet high or something like that. It's completely private, so I can be butt ass naked in my backyard if I want to, which I will be because I got to even out this situation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as a brown person this is offensive this that is racism is unac unacceptable. Racism right unacceptable. Uh, my body my my body is being racist towards me uh the the english side is being boring racist. with the J japanese side yeah so um so yeah i get this ideal ass backyard it does have hookups for a washer and dryer though i would have to get that for the backyard for the backyard. So it's weird. So you go like, or not as weird. It's just new to me. So you walk through the backyard, past the pool and around. And then there's this like cubby. Oh, uh, okay. Outdoor cubby thing. Um, a lot of people in the Medita group recommend that you rent washing machines or that you send out to the service because the water is so hard here mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. um, they say you end up having to kind of replace your washers. Mm -hmm. or pay extra to have them like taken apart and cleaned and put it back together. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I think I'll probably send out. Mm. Well, something. and then we'll, and then we'll price it. We'll see. Yeah. Right? Cause I've been pricing them and you know, it's like eight to $900 just for the washer itself out here because electronics are more expensive out here. Yeah. Um, you know, so I don't know, unless I purchased a house, I'm not sure that I want to, purchase that yet i i don't know well, um, and if it's a service where they deliver it back to you then that's the thing i'm going to be looking for because it'd be better for me than having to get into an uber to drop my laundry to go pick it up you know that right. kind of thing so we'll see we'll see what i end up doing um ultimately convenience might win out over time and i'll just be like fuck it i need to 
<laughs> I need to go ahead and buy this, but we'll see. So yeah, they have two rooms on one side of the on the front street side of the house. And one is a small room that I'm going to adapt into my podcast studio. The other one will be a great guest room and or office if Tristan decides he wants to turn it into an office. It's quite a lot bigger. I'm going to take the smaller one for the podcast studio because of the acoustics. It'll be a lot easier on me um, to have the smaller room. It does have a twin bed in there too, but I just, you know, I won't need that. And then on the other side of the house, on the other side of the kitchen living room is where the master bedroom is. Uh, everything has a bathroom, everything has a closet or two closets in some cases. And um, there's a vanity table in the master area too that divides the bedroom part from oh, the bathroom from the part. Bathroom. So it's nice. Um, and I could just walk straight out from my bedroom into where the pool is if I want to. Too. Nice. So, uh, first story, you know, one story, quiet neighborhood. And if uh, I'm not room for five cars. Room for five cars, yeah. So it doesn't have a, it has a driveway that is, they say you can fit five cars across it, which I think is insane. If we get to the point that we decide we are going to get a car, you know, it'd be nice that we have room or if we end up making friends and want to have parties. It's definitely an entertaining house. Like I could, I could have guests and, yeah. you know, have a little party, a little barbecue. Enough room. Like now, how many, how many, yet. how many pesos? Um, so it's 19,000 pesos a month for rent, which is approximately $1,001 a month USD. Um, so I'm already paying 300 less and I was paying in Houston for a much bigger property, a much more private and nice property. And it's just like, I mean, at this point there was a few things they needed to change. So right now they had like, um, like a tarp over the pool area, they're going to replace that with like string lights oh, across oh, it and stuff nice, like that. Nice, um, they need to replace the screen doors um, leading out from the backyard because they're kind of chewed up a little bit. So they're going to replace those before we go. Um, the only thing that I, that I didn't notice, but Tristan did was the, there's only two AC units and it's in the bedrooms, the guest bedroom and the master bedroom. Um, I didn't, I didn't catch that before. So um, there's fans everywhere. And Tristan said the fans were a little bit loud, but you know, we'll work it out. We'll figure, we'll figure it out. So um, no, living rooms do not have AC. Usually they don't. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the listings only said there was only in the bedrooms, um, but there's fans everywhere and all of the things. And a lot of times people say AC and they really do mean window and, and fan. <laughs> um, so you got to pay attention to that kind of stuff when you're looking at listings. Uh, but you know, ultimately it has, it's the nicest looking house we've, we've ever been able to live in before. Even when we owned a house in, in Austin, um, you know, it was a decent sized house or whatever, but it wasn't aesthetically something that I would. I, have I don't remember. You owned a house? Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. It was during the Bush bubble <laughs> where one day my, my, um, when we started our process, we were only going to be paying about like $953 a month for our mortgage. And then the next day before we signed all of our paperwork, like the process started. And then the next day when we were finalizing, something happened and it went up four points. Yeah. So that was fun. Um, and we were, we were so new. We didn't know what we were doing. We just went ahead and signed the papers because we were worried about the $1,100 in Earth's money we were going to lose that we just committed to it. And ultimately it wasn't the best thing in the world that happened to us because our, our mortgage went up to like $1,400. And I was making 42,000 at the time. Tristan was a, a master student at the time, a graduate student. So it was like the worst thing that could have happened. Yeah, and but, then, I mean, it more than doubled your like that. I yeah. didn't. I did not. And then know. two years in, um, things went wild with the whole bush bubble mm -hmm. thing or whatever. Yep. We ended up uh, losing the house. Um, actually, we squatted in it for about a year before we lost it. Um, so it wasn't a, a greatest thing. So we haven't enjoyed. You know, it's taken eleven years for that to get off of our credit, <laughs> our credit and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, it it really did a number on our credit. Uh, for a while there we're still you know we were still trying to recover from it but now we live in mexico we don't need u.s credit necessarily uh so yeah it's the nicest place i think it, it'll it'll be nice um i can you talk to them uh, talk to us about the deposit uh yeah so any extra fees that you had to pay so you do need to be careful when you're looking for a place here, because if they know that you're from America or uh, Europe in particular, there are places that will add what they refer to as a foreigner tax. Um, and I saw that when I was looking at listings, I saw it as low as 6% to as high as 21%. Okay. Um, that is not required by law. That is not a legal 
tax. That is just something that, that they, they are a lot. They just do it. They're just do doing it to take advantage if they want. So she, it was really good to have her be on the lookout for stuff like that. Cause she's like, I, you know, I know what to look like I and know because what I'm, in. I'm the intermediary. It'll be like someone from here is going to be looking at you while you're doing this stuff. Um, so the, the landlord that owns the home, that we'll be going into. She used to live there. And then after that, some Canadians lived there for a while. Some so, Canadians. so it's like nice to know, I guess in this case that she was open to already renting to foreigners, you know, okay. whatever. Um, but because we don't have our temporary residency yet, um, there's the fear that when we go back to try to get it situated, that we might get turned down. And oh, she didn't, okay. you didn't want to get, you know, lose out on the period of time it would take for her to get new people in there. So we're, we paid, a deposit to hold the place. And that was one month's rent worth of deposit. That means they take it off the market and now it's going to be ours. Um, yeah, but we're not going to sign the lease until it's oh, day to move until in. it's until it's like, okay, yeah. Okay. So then the first run month's rent and I have a receipt for it and everything um, is, is to say that we're taking it off the market and you are, you are planning on accepting a lease on this on May 1st. Now okay. on May 1st, that's when I have to pay the balance of all the other deposits and sign the lease. Um, okay. And so that deposit is, is the one month's rent kind of like, you know, how we do in the U S first and last well, month type of a thing. Okay. okay. It, it's a one month rent. So if I was a citizen here, I would pay one month rent. Well, okay. And a one month rent worth of deposit. And and I'm sorry, what was the deposit again? Like what's a one month? That, that's what I'm going to walk it through. So oh, okay. if, I was, you, uh, if I was a local, I would be paying one month <clears throat> rent and one month rent deposit to, to okay. have the place. But because I'm a okay. foreigner and on a tourism visa, and I had an extra one month rent. So altogether, I have the 1900 or 19,000 I already put down, um, 19,000 pesos. The May 1st, I will pay... May's rent, rent, which is 19,000 pesos, plus another deposit of 19,000 pesos. And that is sort of like the, your, it's kind of the protection because I'm a foreigner and on a yeah. tourist visa. Okay. Because I have four cats, I'm paying half a month's rent deposit on the cats. So one time. That, that's about one time. So you're not uh, paying any additional rent a month? Just one? No, no, just okay. just the rent itself. Okay. So altogether, that is um, three times nineteen thousand plus was like eight thousand five hundred um, for the cat. And deposit. you signed, and you signed. Technically, you'll be signing a, a year lease. Technically, I will be signing a year lease. Okay. So if something happens and we have to go back to the states or some shit like that or whatever, they're protected. Um, then I would be sacrificing all those deposits. Bye. But if I keep the whole year lease or I decide to extend it and I'm there for multiple years when I am finally ready to leave I am I have two of those 19,000 oh that will be get back okay okay and and also the cat deposit as long as they don't have to fix the damage like as long as like my cats don't damage it I should get all that back okay. um and as long as I don't do, I don't cause any damage outside of normal wear and tear, I should get right. both those deposits uh, of, for the rent and the cat deposit back. Um, so here in, in Mexico, you know how in the U.S. Uh, you can sign legal documents in English and Spanish and other languages as long as you have a translator and stuff like that. Right. Um, here, you can only sign legal documents in Spanish. That is the official oh. language here in the in the country. It's on okay. paper as official language. So all of the legal documents are in Spanish. Um, it, whereas in the U.S., technically the U.S. does not have an official language. language. So and you, each state might have different languages. So right, like California, right. for example, lists English and Spanish as the two state languages. So that's mm. why you can fill out paperwork in Spanish and in English, and in, in, English. The, in, okay. in California. Um, and different states like Louisiana has French and English as their official languages. Texas has Spanish, English, and Vietnamese. Um, but the U.S. government, the federal government, doesn't list an official language. So that's why you can have legal documents in different languages. Um, here, you can't. You can only have it in yeah, Spanish. Only in Spanish. Only okay. in Spanish. So you have to, to arrange for a lease, you have to go to a, a lawyer's office, and they have to 
provide you the document for your lease and you have to sign it and the lawyer has to sign it and the landlord has to sign it and your real estate agent has to sign it as well. Okay. Um, so that's another place where you could be accidentally or not accidentally, where you could also potentially pay more than is necessary because okay. they know you're American. They or know you're American. Doing. They're going yeah. to, okay. So in this case, um, Aria works with a real estate agent named Jose. Jose has a lawyer he works with all the time. Jose's lawyer only charges 750 pesos, which is like $36, $38 for the fee to, 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 to go to, to his to office. 30, you said 38. I'm sorry. How much, how many pesos again? It's about 750 pesos. Okay. So, okay. but, that, but you can see some that'll charge you like 2,800 pesos, 3,200 pesos or something like that. So in his case, he works with a guy, they have an arrangement and it, it's only about 750 pesos to go okay. to law, lawyer's appointment. So on May 1st, that'll be the day that Tristan and I, um, so only one of us needed to secure it. So okay. I'm on the documentation right now for holding it. Once okay. May 1st rolls around, both Tristan and I and our passports will have to be present at the lawyer's office with um, okay. Jose and Aria. So Aria will communicate to Jose for me and the lawyer and then vice versa. She'll communicate back. And then like when I received the document that said, you know, I'm, I'm providing 19,000 pesos for this rental property that's going to be held for me until May 1st. Then I would, and if I choose not to go with the house, I'm sacrificing that nineteen thousand pesos. Uh, okay. She read it to me, but then I also took the picture of it on Google Translate so that so I could smart. have a copy of it in English also. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll do that again on May first when it comes time. So on May first, okay. I have to pay that balance of the the two nineteen thousand pesos, the eight hundred and fifty um, eight thousand fifty pesos, and then the seven hundred and fifty pesos. I have to have okay. all that with me on May with 1st you on that third day. Yeah. And then I'll sign the lease or whatever. Uh, and, he, and, and I'm assuming all in ca cash. Uh, they will take it in cash. They say you can do the transfers, but those always come with extra always fees. Extra fees. So, well, I would, do they even have, what do they have them here? The cashier's checks. Uh, I don't know if they do. I, I honestly don't know. Um, I, they, but like even my landlord. So when we said like, how do we pay you every month? And she says, you just send me a message to say you have the cash and I'll come and pick it up and then I'll give you a receipt every time. Okay. So every time you hand over cash, you will get a receipt. Um, in my case, the receipt is a legal document that says like, this is how much you paid. I And then he like counts it and then he took a picture. So this is how, how it was. Like I put my ID or, you know, my passport and the, and the letter I took a picture. That's how uh -huh. he did it. And then on my side, I took his ID, his real estate license, put it on top of the document and took a and picture. And then took it. That's you smart. Know, so that you have yeah. like proof of who he is. He also works for one of the biggest real estate com companies that's uh, countrywide. You know, so are it's we like allowed traceable. to say who? Are we allowed to say who? Uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember what it is, but I have it written down. Mm -hmm. So I can go check it out uh, after I after this. So it's like, it's traceable, it's findable, blah, 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 blah. The utility, like what's included in the rent at the place that I'm going to be at is going to be Thank like you. the gas because it's a tank on the roof already. They've okay. already put 500 pesos worth of, of gas up there. And there's not like a tell. Basically, as I use the gas oven or stove, it'll deplete. And then one day, if the gas doesn't come on, that means it needs to be filled up again. So there's not, cause I said, was there a warning? Is there a sound? And um, I was making a gesture of like, or is it just like, Oh, it doesn't work. And she went <laughs> like this, like that's how she did it. So uh, <laughs> that was the landlord. She was like, yeah, Wait, it just, does that mean no hot water? I mean, I never took a hot water bath at all. So when I was there. Yeah, so I guess. Um, so that there is a hot water tank, like over by where the washing machine, but is, is it electric be? or is it run it, on? It's, it's electric. Oh, so okay. I think okay. we're probably going to have cold and hot water. I think we'll okay. find that out. Um, like here at the Airbnb, we sometimes have hot water. We sometimes don't. And I think that is because like here at the apartment, they must crank it on occasion and we don't have right. to. Right. Um, but there's also times of day where we have like no water pressure at all, which like at happened earlier this afternoon. So it doesn't shoot you in the face all the time. And it doesn't shoot you in the face all the time. But like today they were emptying out the pool because they empty it out and clean it once a week and then they well, fill good. it up. So while well, they were good. filling it up, I think that's why we didn't have water pressure. Uh, oh, so yeah, we'll see like when it comes to the water and the gas and all that kind of stuff, we'll see. Um, the utility that is included is trash, uh, basura. Um, okay, so 
so that they get you give you 500 pesos worth of gas on top of your roof how long does that last for and how much she is said that? it really like, depends on how much you use it so like if you cook a lot it'll go away but i'm going to use it pretty much to like make my tea every morning and like do you cook I cook. a lot i'm not a big cook like i want to i i'm going to need to like cook learn soon yeah. because yeah. um we're paying a lot of money on food delivery every every day right but you know and here like the way the stoves are 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 different than the U S like here you have to have a match or a lighter and you light it and you light the oven. You don't have a, the pilot light is not in, in the ovens and in the stoves, you have to turn the gas on and then light it with a match or with. Okay. A, so like in some of the other, so, okay. That's everywhere here. Was that, was that, is that even still on your, Oh, that is. Yeah. So even oh. here, like when I cooked a pizza the other night, Huh? There's a little, like you open the oven, there's a little like tube that's just at the bottom. When you turn the gas on, you light that tube and then you see it light up and that's how you cook. So I, I didn't know that because like you, I didn't realize, I, can't, I forgot that you had a gas. I had an induction um, mm. stove on, on at our, but you remember it was so complicated. I didn't even try. He had all funny. these buttons and I was like, nope. was like never mind. Yeah, no, nope. for gas stoves and ovens, that's how you have to light it yourself, um, which I actually kind of well, think is I, better because I, in Houston, we right. had a an oven that when that pilot light went out, we could not take it apart. We had to call the Somebody, handy yeah. guy to come here to take it apart, to light the pilot light. It was so inconvenient and it because it uh, happened like three times while we lived there. I'm, I'm going to make a note for myself because my main... Um, fear is the dogs or somebody leaning over something and turning on gas mm -hmm. um because of tiktok because tiktok tells me everything yeah. there's okay, somebody so. who's who's there's things that you can do that you can make it so they don't turn on well um, my cats for years have never ventured on top of the ovens or stoves or or even really the countertops and here they're on the counters all the time and then i watched rain <laughs> at while i was cooking a hot like while i was cooking a pizza <laughs> in the oven and the top of the stove was hot was beep, 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 across and i was like what the fuck are, like, you, are doing, you doing dude? yeah so dude. yeah i don't know I um want you to, jeff misses his cat yeah, he misses his cat. Yeah, yeah, so I will probably have to get some kind of top to stick on top of there or something, something. like that. I, I That's don't a bad want idea. To, yeah. do, to, to be on the stove. I'd like to train them out of it. Like, I'm trying to remind them that while like while they might have an Arabic dad, they do have a black mom. So we don't behave <laughs> that, like that. We don't we don't behave like that. So, you know, we need we need them to learn that they are in a black household. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. It's still a couple of weeks until we can get into the place and then do you find it cheaper and e did you find it? Okay. One, was this easy? I mean, it was easier than I expected. It was okay. a little bit more expensive in terms of getting into the place. And I, you okay. know, obviously with all these extra um, things Jeez. and uh, I, I, I'm a little under pressure for <laughs> the first of May, like everything that's going to have to drop. That being said, like we have a little bit more money once May is over, right, 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 because right, right, right. Um, because we're getting rid of our U.S. health insurance and stuff like that, or whatever. So it won't be as painful in June going forward, but leading into May, it's a little bit painful <laughs> in terms of of that kind of stuff. So I will say, like the process seems very easy, even though there's the language barrier. Having that person like Aria to help um, will be a tremendous support. Plus, we get along really well. I actually might have her on the show too be, to talk about this process with that'll because be, we, we talked be a little bit about that because um, she's kind of doing something similar, like a different version of what you and I kind of want to do. But and mm -hmm. that is basically she wants to help people who want to come here to mm -hmm. maneuver living here well through getting yeah. their houses, getting their setup. Like with the person who recommended her to the group, she that woman has reached out to her to find nannies, to find drivers, oh. to all kinds of stuff or whatever. So. I think in that respect, Adia will be a um, like a nice resource for us or anybody we know that wants to come out here. I would definitely recommend that process. So, but I'll let you know, like, because you know, May first will come, and that's the day I'll have to sign all those papers and pay all that money. And you know, as long as that goes well, I I just thought that it would take longer to find some, like, to even get in to see a house. Yeah. Well, and that, you were like Johnny on yeah. the spot. It was, it was pretty much like the day she sent me that thing. And I was like, yeah, I'd like to, is it possible to go see it? She's like, we can go see it tomorrow, you know? Um, 
So that was pretty crazy. We even managed to get home in time for Tristan to change, grab his gi and go to jujitsu. Go- yeah. So we, we, we managed to make it squeeze it all in. Cause he like got off of work. We went down to the place and then we got home and then he, he had time to get to jujitsu. So um, it worked out. Jujitsu is going to be a far drive. We're going to have to work out financially. The if cost that- of, like the jujitsu itself is affordable. It's the driving from the neighborhood to where he's going to be at. That's going to be pricey. So we might need to buy him a bike or something, which he would want anyway to try to cut that down if we can, because otherwise it'll be about $42 a Get week. Get him a little motorized scooter. He doesn't want motorized. He wants a regular ass, regular ass bicycle. Basically, just, just uh, thinking about that in the in the humidity makes me. Oh, I know. Like the summer, this, this I, like change. I'm curious to see how we get through this first year. If we're gonna be like, we need to find a place <laughs> for the summer months to live in. I hope and not. Then, I hope. Know. I hope that because I saw the people there living there and they're not sweating. So well, you know, the be- people who are from here is different. Like when we lived in Massachusetts, we eventually acclimated to the winter to the de- to the point that we were wearing hoodies in 12 degree weather. Yeah. I get cold now in at 70 yeah. degrees. So yeah. like my, I acclimated back to California weather and then to Houston weather. And so yeah. now like when I'm here in the house, like right now, the room that I'm in, I have the AC on set to 26 degrees Celsius which I think is around 75 or 74 or something like that. I'm Mm -hmm. getting chilly. I'm going to turn it up a little bit to, to calm it down in a little while, but I left the record. I left the thing over there. So that's why I'm not getting up to do it. I didn't uh, see. I don't think 90 is hot. I don't think it's hot. I do like my, my sweet spot, 68 to 74. That's the temperature I like, but but also I'm half British. But I'm I'm I now live on the sun. See, I've acclimated that 120. Yes. That's hot. So right? you you'll probably fare a little bit better heat wise here than I will until but the I acclimate. Humidity, the humidity, but the humidity and I, is different, and I can uh, handle humidity because I've lived in Texas for a couple of times throughout my life. You know, I, I can. I don't know how you're gonna do. It. I'm thinking about do I cut off all my hair? I'm you know I don't want to shave my hair again because I don't want to have to grow it back again because the grow back was really annoying that being said i have been bunching my hair up like this since we got here and you know i just finally started to find a style that i enjoyed to do with my hair and now like i'll do it and then within five 20 minutes it's flat (laughs) and it's not worth it you know have you tried the doing this dry shampoo during the day to kind of like soak up the um, I've done the dry shampoo a couple times, but then I've put it right back like this. So because when know. you feel when it's damp and it's on the back of your neck, it feels gross. I it's get it. Fe- it just feels gross. Uh, it just I, feels I, hot I get all the time. Um, that being said, like I have a face for a ponytail. Like pony pulling my hair into a ponytail actually works for you my do face have too. So a very you have a very pretty face ponytail face. friendly face. For, for so I'm friendly. I so, I do not. Yeah. Um. Not. So I think I think. I think that's it, Internet. Yes. But if Internet, you have questions. Like, is there something we should ask? Is there something we should try? Yeah, is I definitely want to start do? getting more influences. So if you if you follow us on the social media, you might have noticed I posted something the other day about polyamory while abroad, uh, because that's a personal issue for me. I want to know that as I live in another country that I maneuver polyamory without like breaking any like laws or anything like that. Salud. Um, that was my cat sneezing. Uh, that's Revan. Revan's with me tonight. Um and uh, and so I'm looking for the audience to participate. Uh, I want to see people who have either lived abroad and practiced poly, how they've maneuvered it. I also want people who are thinking about moving abroad, but don't because they're poly and they've got right. concern to send in some questions. Um, it is harder than I thought it was <laughs> to find um, people to talk to about this. So I'm, I'm doing some research. I'm reaching out to a bunch of different groups and stuff like that, hoping that I can find people that are willing to allow me to share the I'll check. I'll post. check that life. I'll check that life. Yeah, because I, you know, I'm like for me, it, poly is hard to maneuver as it is. As a brown person, black and brown poly and white poly are different things. I found right. myself joining poly groups that are predominantly white and being like, oh no, this is not for me at all. It's uncomfortable. It's unsafe. I'm not. It, it doesn't vibe with the way that I need to do poly. And then I found black poly groups that are a mixed bag between like 
very (laughs) anti-queer and also safe. So like, there's like these weird um, balances that I've had to maneuver as a, as a black and brown polyamorous person. Um, So now to also add the element of living in a different country, um, there's, I'm really curious about how to maneuver this. So I don't know when I'm going to be able to do this episode. Yeah, but that'll be a good one. But that'll be one I'm really actively but, uh, trying to do. So if you're listening I, to this and you yeah. know anything or you know somebody, holla at your main because I'm trying to put this episode together Pineapple. for y'all and me. No, that's swingers. I, oh, damn it. Pineapple. What, what, is, is there a one for for just poly? Is it not pineapple? Not necessarily. I mean, there is that poly flag that most of us don't agree on. There's the heart with the infinity symbol and things like that. No, an upside down po- uh, pineapple that's predominantly done in cruises and vacation areas. That is a symbol that you are a swinger and you are down for swinging. I am not a swinger. I, you're not a swinger. Okay. It is not for me. Um, it's it's fine for folks that consent and it's cool. It's just not for me. Not for um, and fine. the way in which I've been approached about potential swinging has always been gross. Uh, so, yeah, it's not for me. It doesn't okay. mean that it's always well, gross. It means that every time I've been approached, it's been gross. So, <laughs> internet, uh, far and wide, por favor. Por favor. Uh, we would, if you know somebody that is in the poly scene in Mexico, could you have them reach out to us? We would love to talk to them. Or uh, actually any country, because I'm kind of curious about how people move across the board. That would be a good board. episode, too. Yeah. The other thing I thought that we thought was fun coming up here is we're going to send Charmaine and Tristan to American restaurants in <laughs> so we've already done it once like you jeff and i went to went to uh, mcdonald's and actually was a preferred it had a taste sensation yeah. um it was definitely better than u.s mcdonald's for the most part except for i do miss u.s mcdonald fries uh so yeah i'm gonna start doing that i will record going to and or receiving delivery food from American restaurants that are here in Mexico to see how the food differs. It definitely does so far from what I've experienced. Um, And then I'll share that with y'all on a future episode of that would be fun. I think, I think, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a little goofy. Yes. Right. So the other thing is I'm trying to find out where all the homosexuals are because I have not seen them yet. (laughs) You weren't paying attention. There were so many gay bars that we walked by. Really? Okay, then I must be oblivious because I did not see. I've been like looking, hunting. I know you saw the one person that had the the button. Yeah. Um. But yeah, Yeah, I'm I'm still looking. I'm looking for the tribe. There's one person I know out here. Well, I don't know them, but they're in a group of mine. I've reached out to them, but I haven't heard from them yet. So, I'll try to find our people. Um. Yeah. We have I'll to try to find them. We'll find more. Yeah. But that's that's all we got. Please be sure to follow us on social media at Queer Far Pod. That is on the tickety talks, the Instagrams, and all that kinds of things. Uh, if you would like to drop some coins in the tip jar and support our show, you can go to our coffee page, which is ko-fi.com slash queer far pod. And yeah. we're waxed. We're waxed. We're waxed. And I'm not unpacking until I move to my new house. <laughs> and I'm right. not unpacking. And we're not unpacking. All right, let's go. Bye, Bye. internet. <laughs>